This week's video is sponsored by a Patreon supporter, God Works Out. His YouTube channel delves into atheist issues and critiquing theistic beliefs. Head on over and make sure to subscribe. Season's Greetings This week's video departs from my typical affair as I share with you 10 things you may not know about Christmas. There is no greater iconic symbol of the holiday than the Christmas tree. It is believed that early pagan Europeans worshipped trees and the practice continued after their conversion to Christianity. A vestige of nature worship in which primitive man believed that nature, symbolically represented in the tree, was a conscious entity that could direct one's life. In its modern form, this centerpiece of festivities was born in Germany in the 16th century and was traditionally decorated with food items such as apples, nuts, and later candles. The jolly, plump old man with a white beard and red suit, Santa Claus, had his origins way back in 280 Common Era, in a small Roman town, Patara, near Myra in modern-day Turkey. Saint Nicholas was admired for his piety and kindness, and later became the patron saint of many groups, ranging from sailors to entire nations. Santa's gift-giving nature stems from a story of Saint Nicholas in which he saved three young girls from a life of prostitution when he secretly delivered bags of gold to their father, with which to pay for their dowries so they could get married instead. Over the next few hundred years, Saint Nicholas took on certain aspects of earlier European deities like the Roman Saturn or Norse Odin, who appeared as white-bearded men wielding magical flying powers. The transformation to Santa Claus came in the 19th century thanks to a series of poets and writers who romanticized the Christmas season. Believed by many to be nothing more than capitalism run amok, the gift giving associated with Christmas comes to us from the ancient Romans who exchanged gifts on New Year's Day. This was initially shunned by the early church, but the act of giving gifts lived on and now becomes the focus of the season for many theists and non-theists alike. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, a beloved character of many children's Christmas stories, was created as a marketing gimmick for Montgomery Ward's holiday coloring book in 1939. The creation and distribution of this book was to entice shoppers to come to their store for their holiday shopping. Additionally, his name originally was to be Reginald, and his nose blew because Montgomery Ward didn't want Rudolph to appear to suffer from chronic alcoholism. Thankfully, history unfolded as it did, as Reginald the Blue-Nosed Reindeer just doesn't have the same ring or charm. For the first 300 years after the supposed life and death of Jesus, his birth was not celebrated at all. In 336 Common Era, we find the earliest mention of honoring Jesus' birthday in a Roman calendar. While it's not definitively known why the 25th of December was chosen, it is widely believed to be due to the early church's desire to provide an alternative celebration to the Roman birthday of the unconquered son and the Persian birthday of Mithras, both of which were celebrated on or around the winter solstice. Mistletoes tend to spring up from seeds distributed by bird droppings, and that is reflected in the etymology of the word missile, which meant dung, and toe, which means twig. A lot less romantic now, kissing under the poop twig. According to legend, hanging stockings over the fireplace originated with the story mentioned earlier regarding St. Nicholas and the three young daughters who couldn't afford to get married. In the story, most likely less fact than fiction, St. Nicholas threw a bag of gold into the house and it landed in the stockings drying over the fireplace. Many of the most popular tunes of the once strictly Christian holiday have interesting and unexpected histories. Jingle Bells, composed by James Lord Pierrepont in the 1850s, was actually created to commemorate the famed Medford sleigh races in November. It later had its lyrics changed to better fit with Christmas. O Holy Night was written 1847 by this dude, a devout Jewish man living in France. A local parish priest asked him for a song to open his Christmas Mass. 
The ugly, tacky Christmas sweater, often worn by old men and hipsters, was made popular by Bill Cosby on the 1980s sitcom The Cosby Show. While the designers of the sweater on the show didn't take credit for its creation, it was first manufactured under the name of Jingle Bell Sweaters during the 80s. Every year, many Christians in the United States attempt to push church-state boundaries by installing the nativity scene on government land. What they most likely don't know is that this famous scene of Jesus' birth in a barn was actually created by St. Francis of Assisi in 1223 after his visit to the Holy Land. It was one man's inspired vision of the biblical origin story of a demigod. I wish you all a happy and safe holiday season. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe. If you can spare a few dollars to support the efforts of this channel, visit my Patreon page here and become a patron today. If you are looking for a great place to communicate with vegans, atheists, theists, and non-vegans from across the globe, consider joining the Vegan Atheist Forum. Our growing community is always looking for new members with whom we can share our experiences, debate issues, discuss, and learn from each other. Join the conversation at theveganatheist.com slash forum. The mark of a failed ideology is one that refuses to accept any level of criticism. One such religious ideology is that of Islam which in recent years has been growing more intolerant and violent towards not only those outside the religion, but those within, that voice anything other than praise. 